my heart the beat goes on and on and on and on and right yeah hello everyone today i'm with my friend hannah witten well lucky me first response video i decided to do and i've already found myself in a three-way this is a real life proper feminist oh She's so professional <laughs> i can hardly contain myself it is nice to know, though, that she is a proper professional feminist. Let's see what she has to say about the subject. No, but in all seriousness, you know a lot about the subject, more than I do. And I did a video on it earlier in the month. I got a lot of interesting comments. Feedback. <laughs> Feedback, yeah, sure. Just out of curiosity, how many of those happen to be critical of feminism as an ideology? Hannah, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Hannah. I make sex ed videos and videos about feminism and stuff. And so I talk about it a lot and think about it a lot. Like I think about it a lot, a lot. And read and watch and ev all of that stuff. I absorb a lot. So you're a carbon copy of Lazy Green. Got it. Basically, I didn't really know how to sum up my thoughts on most of the topics that were raised in the feedback. But I feel like talking about it with Hannah will be a good idea. We have a notepad and everything. Yeah. <laughs> we wrote it down. How very professional of you. I'm very professional. Yeah, I just said that. One of the main comments that I got was basically, I'm not a feminist, but I'm for gender equality because men have issues too. Is it just me, or does she have a very dismissive look on her face when she brings up the fact that men have issues too? Okay. What do you think? I have a lot of thoughts about this. Mm. So the first thing about labels, whether you label yourself a feminist, an equalitist, a humanist. I used to be very much, if you don't call yourself a feminist, then you're an asshole. So your average run-of-the-mill everyday feminist then. And now I'm kind of a bit more like, call yourself whatever you want to call yourself, but don't be an asshole. Wanna bet her definition of asshole includes not being a feminist? The best way to explain this is to talk about why I, specifically me, use the word feminist. Uh -huh. Feminism is for gender equality. So even if you say you're not a feminist but for gender equality, me too, I'm, I'm for the same thing. But the way that I think about it is that if you don't call yourself a feminist, then you're not recognizing the systematic historical oppression against women. Well, that's a fancy way of saying you're an asshole if you're not a feminist. We've come a long way and yes, men have issues too. Women have issues. Everywhere else in between on the gender spectrum have issues. Everything is sexist. Everything is racist. Everything is homophobic. And you have to point it all out. Usually all these issues are due to the patriarchy, which is this invisible system. Which secretly rules the world and controls your everyday life. The reason why I call myself a feminist is because I recognize the fact that even though the patriarchy screws men and women over equally, Historically, and currently so, um, women do bear the main brunt of it. Uh, say what? Though the patriarchy screws men and women over equally, historically, and currently so, women do bear the main brunt of it. Men and women over equally, women do bear the main brunt of it. Men and women over equally... Yeah, no. You'll have to forgive me if from this point on I consider you to be full of shit. Also, do notice the brunette's reaction to all this. She's sitting there trying to understand this whole thing like, yeah, men and women are getting screwed over equally. I can I can get behind that. And then when she says, but women are getting screwed worse. And she's like, yeah, yeah, that's that's I can definitely get behind that. Just an interesting observation there. So that's why I use it. And women and men suffer differently. Yes, we do. Because despite what feminism wants to teach you, men and women are actually different. I know, it's shocking. Just let it sink in for a minute. You'll understand eventually. And because of these differences, men and women have different issues in modern society. Men, for instance, want some legal rights, such as reproductive rights, or the right to not have our genitals mutilated at birth. What are some of the current feminist stuff going on? The, the things that um, the patriarchy makes shit for them are very different things. Most of the time, men benefit from the patriarchy. Circumcisions, reproductive rights, and if you're white, cisgendered and straight a right to your sexuality 
Sounds to me like the patriarch is doing a shit ass job. Could you do me a favor and sum up the patriarchy okay. in a sentence? So the patriarchy is the systematic cultural ideas that we have in society that value masculine tendencies and characteristics over feminine tendencies and characteristics. Yes, that's a very good sentence. Give me an example, please. Just one single example where that is actually true. For example, I was watching a video yesterday on how the majority of Hollywood movies have females in a kind of sexy costume Mm -hmm. and they're not the lead. Off the top of your head, can you name me even one Hollywood movie where more women than men are killed? I'll give you a hint. There's not very many of them. The Bechdel test. Skip. The men's issues thing I've been thinking about a lot recently because basically men get screwed over by the patriarchy as well because of the expectations um, of masculinity and what that means. Oh, do tell me, professional feminist, what masculinity means. The main thing that um, a lot of people bring up is the fact that the biggest killer of young men is suicide. And actually men have really high rates of mental health problems because... Um, it's not seen as, like, manly or strong to talk about your feelings. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's not seen as manly or strong to talk about your feelings. Most men in general feel uncomfortable talking about their feelings in the same way that a woman would talk about their feelings. You see, men and women deal with their emotions and their issues in different ways. And one of the... Contributing factors to men's increasing mental health issues in society today is that they are being treated as a woman. I'm not saying that treating people like a woman is a bad thing because it's like a woman. I'm saying men and women deal with issues in different ways. And if you're going to try to deal with a man as if he was a woman it's not going to be very helpful. It would be like trying to train a dog to be a horse. You just can't do that. It's only going to lead to problems. So that's a way that the patriarchy kind of screws up. And feminists care about that too. Yeah, yeah. That's like part of... Exactly. That's part of what we do. Well, here's the funny thing though. You say that you care about men's issues, when in actuality the men's issues that you care about are the men's issues that your made-up patriarchy has made up for men. You're already working within a framework that does not exist within reality. You care about men that don't exist. You care about men in your head. But in the real world, men keep suffering and you refuse to listen to them because my patriarchy like if you break down the patriarchy and you break down gender roles everyone benefits exactly i disagree i say that there are people who are comfortable in those gender roles men and women alike who want to stay in those gender roles because it's a comfort zone to them You're going to have to explain to me how removing people from their comfort zone is beneficial to them. That was very good. Yeah. You're so good. I'm trying. But they're they're still going to come for us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Yes, what an accurate and honest way to represent anyone who might disagree with you. Another comment that I saw floating around a lot, um, which is very fair, was you're just into white feminism. You're too... First world. Yeah, so, correct. Well done for noticing that we are white and we are feminists. You know, the two of you, or at least you, Blondie, come across as a condescending cunt to anyone who has a disagreement with you. That basically means that we're going to have a very particular worldview and a very specific experience of being a woman. Everyone has a different experience of being a woman. Intersectional feminism is where that comes in, and it's about recognising 
different identities. So taking race into account, taking class into account, taking sexuality into account. Taking my dick into account. All of these different things and recognising that everyone's experience is going to be different and therefore feminism needs to accommodate to the different needs of different women. Funny how we're only talking about the different needs of different women now. Did you forget what you said earlier in the video? So the patriarchy screws men and women over equally. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's only the women's that needs the feminisms. Women do bear the main brunt of it. We're going to mess up because we have privilege. Like, and we're going to mess up because there are some things that we just like don't notice. Mm -hmm. But our job is to like sit and listen to people with less privilege than us and then basically like support them. Or here's a crazy idea. Instead of going by this privilege to determine who you should and should not listen to, how about you listen to anyone who says they have a problem? Assessing the problem based on the problem instead of basing it on the person who has the problem, and then prioritizing which problems to solve first based on the severity of the problem alone. Crazy, I know. But it's so crazy, it just might work. Fair comment, if you say you're just white feminists, because, yeah, we're white and we're feminists. Yeah, we have a but lot I, to learn. But, but I definitely try and practice intersectional feminism. I got an interesting comment that was, this woman was saying that if you put yourself in the mindset that everything is offensive, um, she was black and she was saying that if I put myself in the mindset that everything is racist, then I'm going to feel as though everything is racist and everyone's attacking me and mm. she was like well it's similar with sexism what do you think about that she sounds like a totally reasonable person if you put yourself into the mindset that everything is racist everything is going to appear racist so are you now going to realize that if you put yourself in the mindset of everything being sexist everything is going to appear sexist Somehow I doubt you will have that much of an insight here. Um, I like to use the analogy of feminist goggles. So like once you see the patriarchy, you have these goggles on and like you can't unsee it. <sighs> Am I gonna have to play the clip again? Uh -huh. Like it's everywhere. Like it, it literally is everywhere. Like you can see it. Everything is sexist. Everything is racist. Everything is homophobic. And you have to point it all out. Um, and it's exhausting. It's tiring. It's scary. But that doesn't mean we can't take them off. Again? So like once you see the patriarchy you have these goggles on and like you can't unsee it. But that doesn't mean we can't take them off. That is literally within five seconds of each other. How? How do you manage to, in two sentences, completely contradict yourself? How? How is this possible? I like to take my feminist goggles off sometimes when I'm watching a film that yeah. I know has just like is really sexist but I'm just like I'm just gonna enjoy this film uh -huh. like I just don't want to have to think about it so it, yeah it is easy to get offended a lot but it's also important to kind of like retain a sense of humor and also like pick your battles I think is a very important thing because it can be tiring again I find myself in a position where I'm gonna have to ask you how do you do this how do you watch a movie that you yourself consider really sexist and just don't get offended by that when, as far as I can tell, one of your things is to get offended by stuff that is sexist? How, how, how I, headache, ow. Good at this. Stop it. So good at this. They're gonna tell me otherwise, so it's fine. My ego will be in check. Well, <laughs> the last thing that I noted down, I mentioned in the video that I experience sexism every hour. That does sound like a lot. And I want to clarify that because a lot of my work is online, I mm. spend a lot of my time on the internet, and there is a lot of casual sexism on the internet. Casual sexism. Bit of classic casual sexism rape joke here and there. Mm. Exactly. Ooh. Well, like this morning, I went for a run and got catcalled, I hadn't even been awake for an hour. Now hang on, Blondie. This was Brunette Girl's turn to talk about her casual sexism, okay? Why do you feel the need to tell everyone that someone gave you a compliment when you hadn't even been awake for an hour and you went out for a run? I don't see how that has anything to do with Brunette Girl 
experiencing sexism every hour. You just kind of don't mention it because it's just something that happens all the time. For people who don't experience sexism, it's really hard to see. So, like, for us, it's really hard for us to see racism because we're not victims of it. You whitey porcelain-faced cracker girl. What I always try and do is listen and believe people when they tell you that they're experiencing something. If someone says, this happened to me um, because of, like, sexism, racism, or, or whatever it is, um, don't be like, mm, yeah, no, I, I don't believe you, like, or, but it doesn't happen that often, does it? Or like, mm. or like doubt them or make them doubt themselves. Like you just, just accept what they say and believe them, like really believe them and support them in whatever way they need. For being a white, cisgendered, heterosexual man, I have been called the scum of the earth, a worthless piece of shit and a misogynist, potential rapist. You name it. All because of feminism. Do you really think we need any more opposition? Come on now. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. So, we've established that we don't need any more feminism. Finally, we're on the same page here. Feel better equipped? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You're, oh my god, I don't know. You're just so much better at putting your thoughts into words. There was this 17-year-old girl that did a talk and she was doing music A-level and she noticed that all of the composers on her syllabus were male. She took Edaxel, the examining body, like on, got a petition to get female composers on it and she won. And that's not a problem. If there are good female composers out there, then add them to a syllabus. That's fine. It starts to become a problem, though, if they are only added to the syllabus because of their genitals and not because of their actual work. That just shows how much like one individual person can do and how like every mini battle is worth it and everything has like has value. Like campaigning that and winning now means that there's gonna be women composers on the syllabus and more young women studying music are gonna see that. And like a big phrase that was going on at Women of the World Festival is if you can't see it, you can't be it. Well, that's kind of stupid though. I mean, that sort of makes it sound like women can't become anything unless they've seen other women do it. Really? You you think that little of women that they can't make their own decisions without first having some role model to look up to that also has to be female? Mm. And so, like, we need to be able to see women doing all these things because then it will make us be like, oh, I could do that too. I will be a female composer. Yeah. Wow. You really do think that little of women, huh? Well, this has been well serious. Can I say one more thing? Yeah. We're all problematic. Yeah. Like <laughs> the yeah. main thing is how people deal with the criticism. Thanks for watching with Adam. Uh, yep. Good. <laughs> Bye. 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 We're all problematic. Yeah.